Welcome to Applications of Generative AI with Washington University. So let's get right into this. This is the fall 2024 semester, and this is the first semester that this course is being offered. So I'm going to be adding these videos as I take the students at Washington University through this course. There's a GitHub repository as well as a YouTube playlist that have all of the videos and the course information, the code for this class. So here is the GitHub repository that has everything for this Applications of Generative AI course. You'll see I have a, and you'll see that at this point, as of the recording, I'm up through about module eight. There are 13 in all, so I still have a few more of those to, to do, but those will be created as the semester progresses. So here is the syllabus for the course and all of the course material, it's somewhat in book form, but it's as markdown files. So I probably will create a sort of bound printed book for it that you can grab on Amazon if you like, like I do for my other course. I do have another course, Applications of Deep Neural Networks, where we learn how to use PyTorch to, to do um, artificial intelligence more directly with classification and, and regression than the generative AI that we're going to see in this course. So this course, I start by just giving you an introduction to generative AI. We look at the OpenAI API because in this course we will make use of OpenAI. The other major players in that space would be Amazon with all with Bedrock and all of their capabilities, Azure, which is primarily the OpenAI offerings, and then Google Cloud product. We're we're just going with uh, with OpenAI for this course. I'll show you how to log in and get an open AI API that you can make use of with this course and, and go from there. We usually say to budget about $100 in cloud costs for this course. We're really gonna find out exactly what that is this time. I don't think it's going to be any more than that. I suspect it's actually going to be less. So you may not wanna put the entire $100 onto there, but we'll see more about that in, uh, in the next part. We'll deal with prompt-based development. So in a lot of courses, they talk about, hey, if you use ChatGPT or you use large language models to do your homework, that's cheating and you're gonna be in trouble. Well, not in this course. In this course, you are expected to use generative AI. Obviously, the course is about how to program generative AI, but you're fully welcome to use generative AI for any aspect of this of this course to help you to generate your code and do other things like that. And we'll we'll see more about about that. But prompt-based development, this is really I think a turning point in software software engineering. We'll look at large language models and large language models do take the lion's share of this course that we're talking about. We'll do text to image as well and even some speech synthesis, but this is primarily dealing with large language models and how to, how to send text and get text back. We'll talk about multimodal models a bit, which basically take text and images and a video as well, a variety of inputs. Langchain is an open source library for Python and other languages. I believe there's a JavaScript version that is going to, that we're going to see an introduction to, and we're going to make use of it extensively. It takes, first of all, it makes your code compatible so that if you do switch from OpenAI to say Amazon or something else, it's going to, it, it, it's going to work um, just fine without, well, without, without too many changes. And then there's just a lot of other things like memory for chatbots and, and things like that built into Langchain that we're all going to see. We'll see about using Langchain for data extraction, how you can get JSON and other formats out of your prompts that, that you're sending to it, the responses to your prompts. We're going to look at RAG. This is a big deal in generative AI. This is how you use retrieval augmented generation so you augment your prompts with information that you find in a embeddings database, which is a database that you set up where maybe you have corporate documents or other things like that that you want to be part of what the, 
the model knows. We'll do agents. Agents allow multiple steps to be taken, and we also get into tools at this point, which is where you can see how to how to use tools to like search engines, calculators, these kind of things, to really give your agents additional capabilities that they don't have just inherently from the large language model that they're that they're built on. We have a Kaggle assignment. So I will be creating a data set that is completely unique to this to this course. And we are going to, you're, you're going to be challenged to see how accurate of a, of a model using generative AI you can create for this that will um, let you see where you rank among your, your teammates. This is always a very popular part of my other course and certainly hoping to, to continue that into this course. We'll see something called Streamlit, which lets you give your application sort of a GUI look, so website, and we'll see that we can create a chat bot in that way and, and have some user interface elements. We'll get into text to image, so you can generate images completely from AI. You just tell it what kind of an image you want and it creates it. It's, it's pretty magic. We'll get into fine tuning. So fine tuning is where you actually cause the large language model that you're working with to learn something. So you, you'll teach it something. And that's different than RAG, where you're giving it corporate documents. RAG is kind of a lookup. It goes and finds what it wants. Fine tuning is where you literally, it literally learns it. It becomes part of your, of your model. Prompt engineering is very important. And we spend an entire module just talking about prompt engineering. And then we're going to deal with speech processing so that you can see how to create a a chatbot that actually you you talk to it and it, it responds to you. So both text to speech and speech to text. Now each of these sections is going to, each of these modules is going to have an assignment, at least one through 10. So there's 10 programming assignments. The actual syllabus to this course is here and you can certainly take a look at that. This applies more to the students at Washington University taking it, then people following along through the through the internet. But this is where this is how your grades will be calculated for this, and everything will be done through the Warshu Canvas system. So you will you'll have access to that just by virtue of being a student at Washington University. If you're following along through the internet, I won't obviously grade your assignments, but you will. Um, you can certainly look at them, complete them as you as you desire. So there's 10 programming assignments. And these 10 programming assignments, I have some, something that is a, it's basically an auto corrector, auto grader. I wrote it myself, actually. It uses generative AI and a, a variety of other things. It runs in Amazon Cloud. You should get an API key emailed to you with definitely before the, the class starts. I usually send those all out in the week just before the course actually starts. So you should you should already have your API key. If you do not, send me an email and I will get it to you. And again, API keys are just for students of Washington University. You can submit it as many times as you like. And during the first class session where we meet on campus, we will go through all of that. And I'll show you how to actually submit your first your first assignment. This is the Kaggle submission, and I do ask that you send your solution to, to me, the, 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 final, the final project, which you will use your, your same groups that you establish for the Kaggle competition. Thank you for watching the video, and definitely subscribe to keep track of other things that I am doing in the space of artificial intelligence beyond just this course. Thank you for watching.